visualizing change over time sounds simple, right? Well, it depends on the situation. It might be not as straightforward as you think. What's the best visualization is, is not the right question to ask. What's more important is what we want to focus on. What do we exactly want to show? Based on this, let's see what we can do in four different situations. We have a sales data from 2021 and 22. And in the first case, what we want to show is how the totals changed compared to the previous year. So we only want to show the most important numbers and we can do that directly. We want to see the year 2022 and then we can just add the card visual with the total sales, which is like a basic sales data. Then we can add another card showing the difference compared to the previous year. This is the absolute change and it would be cool to show it with a plus or a minus sign indicating whether it's an increase or a decrease. For that, we can create a new calculation and put the previous measure in a variable and then returning a conditional formatting for this value. We could create the same measure for the relative change. And in fact, we could create a new measure putting the two values together. We could also use some colors to indicate whether the change is a good or a bad thing. Let's create a new measure for this. And if the difference is smaller than zero, that's a red flag. If it's larger than zero, it's good for us and zero is neutral. We can add this measure as a conditional formatting. Then we can do the same for the background, but change the transparency to 85%. We could also show it in a different way, creating separate cards and formatting them differently. We could also show the numbers in a textual context. It's only possible if you have some additional information. Within the text, we can highlight what we want to focus on, making the text bold and also changing the size of the numbers. We can even add the banner and emphasize that it's a good thing happening here. This visual here are here also guides the eyes of the user and sets the tone for the interpretation. What if we don't only want to see these two numbers, but also the trend over time and how does it compare to the previous year? Showing trend over time works best with the line chart. It's very straightforward. We can see the trend that the sales peaked in summer and it decreased after that and the same happened in last year. If it's more important to compare the individual months to the same month in the last year, a bar chart could work better. Here you can see side by side the current and the previous year values and also maybe comparing the same values across the months works better here. But it's harder to see the trend. The two values break the flow of each other. Maybe a combination chart could work better, combining a column chart and a line chart. Now the trend is more visible and we can still very easily compare the individual months with each other, but we have a harder time to compare the months to the previous month. We have to compare the tops of the columns, the horizontal lines, with a point on the line in the middle of the charts. We have an option to change the line from linear to stepped. And in this case, I think it works better because you can compare the two horizontal lines with each other and it makes a better case. What if we want to see the change not only for the totals, but also for the subcomponents and also be able to compare these values with each other. If you look at the data again, we can see that there are four different regions. We can take the line chart as an example and see what happens if we pull the region on the legend. We see the trend of the current sales for each region at the same time, but it's not possible to put another measure in the visual if we use a legend. We could try to overlap some visuals, one with the current year and one with the last year, but it just becomes too crowded. Alternatively, what we could do is to create two separate visuals for the total sales and the regional sales, and then just leveraging the interactivity of Power BI and see how the total sales changes upon selection. Let's see how it works with the column chart. And in this case, we can keep both the current sales and the previous sales values. So we can still compare well the totals from this year and the previous year. We can also see the context of the totals, the different regions. We can also see the trend of the bottom subcomponent, but we cannot see really see the trend of the other subcomponents because the stacks don't have a common baseline. And we can also not compare them to the previous year. Even if I select something, it doesn't really make any sense. So this is also not a great solution. What we want to see is the change over time for the different subcomponents and be able to compare them with each other. What could work here well is a slope graph. To create the slope graph was a bit tricky because the year slicer filters the visual. So it only shows the 2022 values. 
what I wanted is to have a visual where the slicer doesn't filter the x-axis, but it still filters the cells. So I had to make a copy of the date table and make sure that it's not connected to the fact cells. So I replaced the year from the date table with the year from the disconnected second date table. Then I had to create a measure which returns only the sales value for the current year and for the previous year. If the year from the disconnected table equals the year from the slicer, it returns the sales value. If it equals the year from the slicer minus one, it returns the sales last year value. If I change the filter, the visual adjusts nicely. Here we can see very easily the change over time and we can also quickly compare the regions with each other. Selecting the regions, we can also see the exact changes. What got lost is the trend over time, so we don't see the development over the months, but we still see the direction of the change, whether it decreased or increased. And this is kind of like a trade-off you have to do. So what is more important for you, seeing the trend over time or seeing the changes and being able to compare them with each other? So you cannot show too many things in one single visualization. If you also want to see the trend, then you have to create a new visual for that. In the last setup, our focus is to see everything in data. So we want to see exactly the numbers and be able to analyze them. And the best way to do it is with a table or a matrix, just lay everything out and the users are able to find and see what they want to see. Here you can show only the numbers directly, or you can also add some spark lines to show the trends. Or you can even combine this with other visuals from the previous scenarios and just see everything put together. These are four quick solutions which work for these situations. There are a lot of other ways to do it. If you have some ideas, you can put it in the comments. If you are interested in how I did these visualizations, you can check out this tutorial I made for it.